Hi folks, welcome to my virtual classroom on AIX. Uh, today I am going to show you how to configure a NIM server. First of all, before configuring a NIM server, uh, before configuring an AX server as a NIM server, you need to install the required softwares. Basically, you need uh, two file set, two file sets. Uh, I will show you. Uh, boss.sysmgt.nim.client by default this file set will get installed uh, this is required for a NIM client for a, a NIM server you need to install boss.sysmgt.nim.master and name.spot I have put my uh, AXCD in the CD drive let's see uh, whether the file set is available or not in the CD Okay, okay. Here in the bottom, you see two file sets: nim.master and nim.spot. Uh, you need to install these two file sets to configure your AIX server as a NIM server. Let me install these two file sets one by one. Open a notebook. Uh, okay, now we have installed uh, nim.master and nim.spot file sets. Um, next, we are going to see how to configure this machine as a nim server. So now we have installed uh, the file search required for a NIM server. That's nim.master and nim.spot. Now we are going to configure this server as a NIM server. So when you configure this server, there will be certain demons added to the server and they will start running. And uh, there will be a configuration file that is slash etc slash name info and uh, certain objects and object classes are added into the ODM and uh, while you configure the NIM server for the first time um, it will create a LPP source and spot in the NIM, ma NIM master server so you had to insert your CD or DVD of basic operating system my machine is uh, running on a AIX 5.3 TL5 so I have inserted the DVD of uh, AX 5.3 TL5 now I am going to configure this server as a NIMS master server you have multiple ways to configure a NIMS server you can use a command, you can use uh, a script you can use smitty uh, here I am using smitty that's a smitty space name over here you had to select the first menu item that is configure the name environment and then the first menu item configure a basic name environment here you got to select the, mm, the primary interface of your name master server that is en0 if you have multiple interfaces, you select whichever you are going to use for the NIM environment. Mm -hmm. 
then comes the input device for installation images from where you want to copy the uh, file sets we are going to copy it from the CD so I put the CD 0 and the LPP source name here I have put the AX5 TL5 CD so I'm just changing the name for the LPP source that's for easier identification so next comes the LPP source directory where you want to uh, create LPP source directory I want to create it under export LPP source and uh, if if it's just a directory then the file system will be copied to your root file system that will uh, you know fill your file system so uh, we are going to create a new file system here you have the options create new file system for LPP source yes and uh, file system size uh, for each LPP source you need to have uh, somewhere around 3 GB and uh, you add some 10 percent as a buffer space so let's make it as uh, 3500 MB that's three, around 3.5 GB and where you want to create a file system if you have a separate volume group like an MVG you can mention that in my case I don't have any other VG so I just put root VG and here comes the spot and uh, I'm going to change the name of the spot and uh, the directory is export spot and again do you want to create a new file system I say yes and what should be the size um, for a spot you need to have at least 500 MB ok the requirement for spot is 500 MB space uh, plus you add some buffer space let's make it as 3, uh, 650 MB and a volume group again root VG and this is for disk loss and data loss so you can just ignore these questions and uh, if you want to create uh, system bundles boss INST data resource by default this will be yes just leave it as it is and if you want to add uh, uh, machines to the name database you can mention over here using a definition file normally we don't do it we do it uh, later on and this is the final question suppose if this configuration gets failed in between uh, what will happen you have to remove whatever the changes has uh, done but if you say yes if if any part of this operation fails uh, it will remove all the newly added new name definitions and file system so it will be easy to start from scratch you don't have to do any backout manually the backout will be done automatically so after answering all the questions just press enter now you can see the NIM master is getting initialized uh, basically it will add two subsystems two demands to the system NIMD and NIM ACES and, uh, and then the, the demands will get started then it will check for the available space for the new file systems uh, if the space is available in the volume group then it will create the file systems so first we it's creating a export LPP source and the file system is created and you can even see it is mounted and you can see export for file system is created it is mounted and uh, now it is oh man something has happened let me fix the issue okay the issue was the CD was already mounted so I have unmounted it and uh, let us try it again
Okay, now all the file systems are recreated and uh, it is preparing to copy the install images. So first of all, it will copy the it will create the LPP source uh, by copying all the file sets from the CD to the LPP source directory, and then uh, it will create a spot. Uh, for creating a spot, the input device is LPP source and not the CD. So if you have a CD. Uh, if you have the uh, basic operating system CD, you can create a LPP source, and after creating the LPP source, you can create a spot using that particular LPP source. This is how it goes. And uh, for doing all these things, you need to have at least 512 MB of RAM. And uh, I got only 512 MB, so it'll take pretty long time. And if you got somewhere around one or two GB, then you know it'll be somewhat faster. So for my system, uh, NIM configuration will take at least uh, two hours. So uh, once it gets completed, you will get uh, over here. You will see the OK. Then you can come out and verify the NIM configuration. By this, uh, we have completed a NIM master server configuration. Uh, by now the NIM master configuration has been completed. You can see the LPP sources, LPP source got created and then uh, it's creating the spot called uh, AX5 TL5 spot. Uh, basically the spot will get created from the LPP source. So everything is success. Now it's creating the bundles, install p bundles, and uh, and a resource of type uh, by boss inst underscore data is also created, and the configuration is completed by now. Let us see the name configuration file, which is name info. Uh, there are a few variables added to the file so this file will be created when you configure your NIM server using smithy and this demo will get start uh, will be added to the system and it will get started you can use ls NIM command to list all the NIM objects it can be resource, it can be machine, or it can be the networks. To find out the uh, objects in the class machines, oops, ls name hyphen c, the class name is machines, and we have another class called networks. So we have only the master server added to the name database, and there uh, is a network object called network one creator. Um, it is of uh, it belongs to the class networks and it is of type ENT and let us see all the resources we got this many resources created when we configure our NIM master server um, these are the two resources which we uh, supplied uh, certain va values like the file system details and all so it's LPP source and spot. The name of the LPP source is AIX53 TL5 LPP. And if you want to see more details about this particular object, let's say the particular LPP source, type ls name hyphen l the object name. You will see the details like uh, where is it located and what is the um, class, what's the type. And what is the state of that? It's ready for use. And uh, if you want to see the mm, spot or resource uh, details, you can see it over here. So the location you can see it's under X export home AX53TL5 spot. 
slash usa and you can also see what version of os it is there in the spot uh, it contains uh, aix5300 tl5 and it is located in the master server so this is how it works so we are done with the in server configuration now you can proceed with uh, the client definitions and you can do uh, um, uh, you can install the operating system on the client and other things basically you will use smitty name and over here you will go to the perform name administration task and you can manage the networks machines resources you can manage group of machines and if you want to unconfigure the name server you go for the last option that is unconfigure name and uh, manage missions you can list all the missions define a mission you can remove a mission as well as you can perform operations on a mission and manage resources you can define a resource like lpp source or spot or a uh, um, mkssb or you can change uh, the show a change or show the characteristics of a resource I can re remove a resource or you can even perform a resource like operations on a resource like you can add a file set to an existing LPP source or you can update uh, an existing LPP source to a uh, um, uh, to a updater or later uh, later on you can uh, remove any file set from the LPP source or you can update it to update it to a technology level or a uh, a newer version of uh, service pack or you can even run LPP check on the LPP source you can do a lot of operations so by this we have completed our name server configuration and desort the resources created in your name server thanks everyone for watching the video have a nice day it and uh, now I will show you how to uh, initialize the boss installation on a name client just say smitty name perform name administration task in the in a name server after the initial configuration whatever you do you define a resource you define a machine you do operation on a machine whatever it is you mostly perform under this uh, menu item that is perform nim administration task over here oh, okay manage machines and here you have to select the perform operations on a mission now you got to select which machine you want to do operation I have only two machines one is master and one is client one uh, here I am selecting client one and these are the different type of operations you can perform on a machine on a name client for example if you want to boot your name client um, in a uh, using a diagnostic image you have to select this first option and uh, if you want to do some co software customization go for the second option uh, if you want to do a AX installation using network you select the third option and if you want to go for a software maintenance go for the main option so basically this main op option you select when you forget the password or roots password or when the file systems root file systems got corrupted or um, when the log device got uh, corrupted or when a super block got corrupted something like that normally what we do we boot uh, the machine using the CD and we go to the recovery mode and go to maintenance mode and uh, we run FSC and all, all those kind of things in a name environment you cannot boot with a CD so normally we um, we uh, change the current state of a name client uh, to the maintenance mode and then we boot it using uh, the network and we go to the maintenance mode and do FSC and all those kind of stuff and uh, if uh, client's state is in maintenance mode and if you want to reset the state you select this option reset and if you want to go, uh, perform some queries on the installed fixes that is a parse 
to select this option and uh, when you want to check the status of a uh, name client you go for the check op option if you want to reboot the machine you can go for this uh, reboot option a little lot of things over here so we select boss underscore inst that is the basic operating system installation We have another matter where we use Smitty Nim underscore Boss INST. Uh, this is the most commonly used uh, way, or you can say a matter for uh, uh, for initializing the boss installation on a Nim client. Here we have selected the machine in the first screen, and in the second screen, it is asking what. Uh, type of installation you want to do. Uh, normally we select option 1 or 2. The option 1 is uh, RTE that is uh, if you want to install it from uh, installation source that is like a file set based installation. The second option is MKSSB. Uh, when you want to restore a MKSSB image like in case of any disasters you might want to restore the uh, MKSSB image on a, uh, on a machine so at the time you select this uh, second option that's MKSSP uh, here I'm going to select only RTE that is uh, file set based installation so when you select RTE you need to select two resources uh, one is LPP source and one is spot and when you select MKSSP you need to select two resources that is MKSSP and spot so spot is common for both of them and if you go for RTE that is LPP source and for MKSSP you have to select the MKSSP resource since we selected uh, RTE it is asking for the LPP source if you have multiple LP source, LPP sources then you need to select the uh, correct one here we got only one LPP source so I am just selecting that one and the spot again we got only one spot um, this was created in this machine so I'm selecting this. It's an AX5.3 TL5 spot. And also keep in mind when you select the LPP source of AX5 TL5, the spot should also be at the same level. If it's in a different level, then you just the client might not boot or anything can happen. Maybe it will stop, you know, installation in between. So we selected the machine name and the type is RT and the spot and LPP source. Here the most important thing is you need to accept the license. And um, here initiate reboot and installation. Now if I say yes, it will reboot the machine. If it will reboot the client machine. And suppose instead of the instead of client one, if it reboots some other protection machine, it will be a problem, you know, for us. So what we do we normally say no for this question that is initiate reboot and maintain installation now we say no over here and after initializing it we go to the client machine and boot it in SMS mode select the network adapter configure the IP and boot it over the network adapter that's how it works and uh, okay we have selected this and the rest of the things if you want you can select or just leave it as default okay if you want to select any other resources like resolve conf resource or image data or boss inst data you can select it and if you have any script that you want to run after the first reboot you can select that uh, script resource in my system I don't have any script or boss inst data or image data, data resource so I'm just saying pressing enter now with the default options so this will uh, assign the LPP source and spot to the client uh, as well as it will uh, initiate the boss boot a uh, uh, boss installation and then after this 
you have to verify whether it is initialized or not boss installation is initialized or not and if it is initialized then you can go to your client machine and boot it in SMS mode and do the rest of the things now it's completed so let us see the state of client one. Here you can see the LPP source pod and E1 and name script is assigned and the current state this is the most important thing to check. Boss installation has been enabled. Okay. Now suppose if you have changed your mind, you don't want to install the uh, OS on the client, then you can always reset the state of the name client using name hyphen or reset command now you can see the current state is ready for a name operation so so basically you need to know only two commands in name that is ls name and name if you are strong enough to work on ls name and name commands then you can do anything using these two commands hi everybody today I'm going to show you how to configure how to define a client in the name server and uh, how to allocate a resource to the name client and how to deallocate a resource as well as how to uh, initialize the boss installation on a client basically today I will be working on a name server and doing all these steps The host name of our name server is AIX server and uh, we have all these resources and missions defined. And we have one LPP source for AIX 53 TL5 LPP and one spot that's uh, AIX 53 TL5 spot. And we don't have any missions defined except our master server and uh, you see a lot of uh, install b bundles defined so i'm going to add the client's ip address to our name server's etc host let's say it is client 1 and uh, its IP is 192.168.2.16 and uh, if in your uh, in corporate environments they used to add it in the DNS server also here it is my home network so I don't I don't have any DNS server so if you're working in office just add it in the DNS entry and uh, basically I don't have a client mission I'm just virtually assuming that uh, I have a client so I'm just going to add the client information to my uh, name server smitty name okay over well here go to perform your name administration task and uh, if the client uh, belongs to the same network address of your name server then you can directly add the machine otherwise you have to add a network object uh, I mean if the client belongs to a different network address then you need to add a network and then you have to add the machine so basically uh, normally we add only the machines in most of the environments the clients will be of the same network address of the name server so here I'm adding the machine so just go to the manage machines and then select define a machine and the uh, host name of the machine you just give the host name the IP address will be taken from your etc host file so based upon your IP address the network object will be selected and uh, 
if you want to select the primary network interface uh, name you can select or just leave it as it is and just press enter the object will be created okay it's done now let us see okay here you can see uh, in class machines we have master as well as we have one client machine that is client one that is of type standalone or you can find out using the lsname hyphen t standalone command also if you want to see more information about the client lsname hyphen l will show and uh, if you want to allocate a resource or if you want to add a resource to the client you can always add it using hyphen o command allocate what type of resource it is lpp underscore source okay okay now we have allocated the uh, one LPP source to the client machine let's see okay here you can see in the lsname hyphen l output the LPP source is equal to axytl 5 LPP earlier it was not there and now after allocating you can see it in the output and the most important thing to check over here is the current state and the m state m state is, uh, is the machine state and c state means the current state the current state is ready for any more operation so if the c state is ready for any more operation then you can um, you can um, change the c state to the maintenance mode or you can initiate the boss uh, it's the basic operating system installation and after initializing it if you don't want to do the installation you can al you can always reset the current state to uh, the ready operation ready state so we have defined the machine and uh, i have allocated a lpp source to the client if i don't want i can always uh, deallocate it using name hyphen o deallocate so whenever you do uh, any operation like this always verify uh, whether it is successfully completed or not now you can see the LPP sources uh, object is removed from the client so this is how you allocate a LPP source or spot to a client or if you do else now I will show you how to um, remove this um, client from the name definitions I mean basically it will remove from the name ODM and all it's very simple name hyphen o remove the machine name but it won't work right now because it has got some resources allocated to the client one so you need to remove those resources uh, deallocate you need to deallocate those resources from the client machine It's a pretty big command, you know. A lot of things to mention. Okay, now I have deallocated uh, LPP source and spot from the 
plane machine and uh, let us try to remove this machine okay now it has removed a client uh, uh, definition from the name database but while doing this it was trying to remove the name info that's the name configuration file from the client machine since we don't have the client machine running right now it says a warning that is unable to remove slash hc name info file on client one that is fine let us verify whether it is removed from the uh, name database or not okay now you can see there is no standalone object and uh, in the class machines we have only the master server okay and now I will also show you how to unconfigure a name server basically you need to remove all these um, resources or you can directly remove unconfigure it using name hyphen o uh, unconfig master oh so no need to remove the resources just name hyphen o unconfig master it will remove the uh, name sys subsystem and name d subsystem and i think it will also remove this uh, name configuration file that's name info yeah it also removed the uh, name info file and re it removed all the 41 objects uh, removed almost like uh, 311 objects from the ODM okay cool now if you type ls name or name nothing will work it says unable to access yet see name info file so this is how you unconfigure a name server then if you want you can uh, uninstall the file sets I find you It takes a long time even to destroy a name server. Okay, now I have removed the named master file set and uh, it's time to remove the other file set. That's post or sysmgt dot name dot spot. So if you remove these two file sets, that means you have removed all the name uh, definitions and all. Now ls name name no commands will work because you get the name and ls name commands um, from these two files so that's boss.sys mgt name.master and uh, name.spot so we have successfully destroyed a name server great so by this uh, we are completing our name chapter